In this episode of Road to CPTS, I'm going to cover creating methodologies and the different methodologies I've developed for different scenarios that may come up during the CPTS or any CTF or pen test in general. So without any delay, let's get started. Developing methodologies are an important step in prepping for the CPTS that the Hack the Box Academy path doesn't really talk about. Your methodology is your guide for tackling a certain scenario during a penetration test. Bruno Rakamura defines it as a written document detailing the relevant methods for a specific scenario, helping you track what you should do and when, as well as what you've already tried. Basically, you want to have a step-by-step -step guide of different enumeration methods and attacks to try in any given scenario to make sure you are able to find the vulnerability and exploit it. Your methodologies will evolve over time as you learn new techniques and have more things to check for during a penetration test. You'll ideally want to have a methodology for every scenario you can come up with, but at the very least, I would have methodologies created for initial enumeration, web server enumeration, Linux privesc, Windows privesc, and an Active Directory environment. As you'll see with my methodologies in a minute here, they don't have to be extremely detailed steps copied from your notes. Instead, they should be numbered items with references to your notes to remind you to check for certain vulnerabilities or misconfigurations to make sure that you leave no stone unturned. One of Bruno Rakamura's tips that I've taken to heart is that you should be able to follow your methodologies blindly and overcome whatever obstacle you're facing. If you manage to run through your entire methodology and you still can't figure out the foothold or a way to privesc, then it's time to add to your methodology. Now that I've explained what methodologies are and why they're so important, let's briefly cover the methodologies that I have developed after completing the CPTS path and some of IPSEC's recommended CTFs. So here in OneNote, I have a book specifically for CTF methodologies, and the very first one being the initial enumeration methodology. So this methodology is for when you just get the IP address and you're trying to figure out what type of machine it is, what ports are open on it, and how we can try to enumerate it further. For the CPTS, you can ignore passive recon because everything you're going to be attacking is internal and they're going to supply you with internal IP addresses. So we can move right on to active recon. And the very first thing I have in my active recon methodology list is to discover all active hosts on the target network, IP range, or subnets and document them all in whatever note taking app that you're going to be using. So I have some bullet points under this first method. Um, the first being an Nmap host discovery scan to try and figure out all of the active IP addresses. We can also try doing an ICMP sweep or ping or fping scan, TCP slash UDB host discovery, ARP scanning, and then any discovered host names that we have we want to add to our ETC host file. Pretty straightforward. And then number two in my initial enumeration methodology is for each active host, we want to scan every single TCP and UDP port and then document each port for the respective host in our note taking app. It's very important that we scan every single TCP and UDP port and not just the common ones because you never know what might be being hosted on a 65,000 port. This doesn't have to be the detailed Nmap scan yet. We just want to make sure that we can reach every single port and we make sure we know which ones are online. Once we know every open port that's on each of the hosts that we've discovered, we're going to want to run service scans on those open ports using Nmap scripts and OS detection. And here I have a link to my Nmap notes specifically for discovering different service versions and enumerating services. And then also added doing manual netcat banner grabbing to verify services manually. And we wanna make sure that we document every single port that we discover in our note taking app. Number four, we have for each detected service, do individual service enumeration to look for more information and vulnerabilities. And then this individual service enumeration link links to my notes on different common ports that may be discovered that we can enumerate or exploit. The content of my notes is a bit out of scope of, for this video. But if you want to learn more about note-taking and how I did it, you can watch episode 2 of this playlist, which is strictly on note-taking. And then number 5, we want to check for vulnerabilities in discovered services and service versions. Searching through Metasploit, ExploitDB, looking at Nmap script outputs, looking for OS version exploits. Just searching Google for the service and version and then exploit GitHub could lead to some results. And then we want to document any discovered vulnerabilities in our note-taking app. Number six, I have to check for file share services, such as FTP, SMB, NFS, things like that, for anonymous logon or the ability to enumerate the different files that are in those shares. And then lastly, I have for number seven, if web server exists, we can move on to our web server enumeration methodology. Now for my web server enumeration methodology, once again, we can skip passive recon. And the very first thing I have in here that we should do is add any domains that we find to our ETC host file. Then we're going to want to run directory and page brute forcing to try and discover different web pages with a tool like Fuff or GoBuster. And then also check for a robots.txt or sitemap.xml file. With web servers, we're typically always going to have something running in the background to do checks for us while we do some manual enumeration. So for number four, we have running subdomain and vhost brute force discovery. Fifth on the list, we have uh, web crawling. So crawling all of the links on the web server to see if we can discover different pages. Number six, we have to look for comments in the HTML or the page source of the web pages to look for any sensitive information. 
including service name versions, hard-coded credentials, things like that. We're also going to want to check error pages, like error page 500 or 403, for any leaked tech stack information. We're also going to want to determine the web server technologies being used and then look for vulnerabilities in those technologies. And then in my bullet points, we see that we can do this with tools like Webalizer, built with WebWeb, Nikto, um, Nmap, discovery scripts, banner grabbing with curl, or we can discover WAFs with WAFWOOF. We're also going to want to look for web service versions on discovered pages that may indicate a CMS is being used. And then I have links to my specific enumeration for different uh, CMSs and other web services, including WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, Tomcat, Jenkins, IIS, and others. And then once we've gathered all that information, we're going to want to look for vulnerabilities in those discovered web service versions and technologies through Metasploit, ExploitDB, uh, just Google searching for GitHub exploits, things like that. And then if we discover any login pages, we're going to want to test for weak or default credentials against that service. And then it's also very important to test any input fields that we can submit data to for things like command injection, file upload vulnerabilities, SQL injection, IDOR vulnerabilities, file inclusion or path traversal, cross-site scripting, being able to change HTTP verbs, and if XML input is accepted, maybe an XXE vulnerability. And this one I recently added after doing one of the CTFs from IPSEC's playlist. And that is if we have a WebSocket or API that's available to us to use SQL map to test for SQL injection. At the bottom, I have links to different Linux, Windows, and web reverse shells that we can use against a vulnerable input field, just for easy reference. That's about all there is to my web server enumeration methodology at this moment. Moving on to Linux privilege escalation methodology. At the very top, I have if a web server exists that there's going to be some additional checks we want to do. Um, we're going to want to check the web configuration files and source code for vulnerabilities or any hard-coded credentials. So I've got a link to my credential hunting uh, notes page here and a reminder to check all source code of all pages, including the index page for any potential misconfigurations or vulnerabilities that we couldn't see just from probing the page uh, from the browser. And then depending on the web server that's being used, we have a bunch of different folders that we're going to want to try and look for. Um, for Apache, Nginx, and other possible locations for web folders. Then moving on to the default Linux privesque methodology, uh, the first thing we can do is run an automation script like linpeas or linenum. And we've got your basic enumeration checks once a foothold is established, uh, checking all the users that are on the system, checking the different networks that are available, checking our pseudo privileges, the OS kernel version, our path, processes running as root, look for any SSH keys, current bash history, uh, look for a readable shadow file or a writable password file. Looking at existing groups, running cron jobs, looking for unmounted file systems or additional drives, any unique writable directories or files, uh, looking at hidden files, looking at different services and versions and binaries that are on the system, looking for configuration files and other scripts. Once again, looking for hard-coded or clear text credentials on the system in other files other than the web server files. Next we have checking pseudo privileges and for SUID and GUID privileges against different services that we have access to. And then uh, comparing them to what is exploitable with GTFO bins. Looking for unique files owned by the user we have control over or the group that that user is a part of. Attempting any LD preload privilege escalation exploits against binaries that we have pseudo privileges over that are not in GTFO bins. Looking to exploit shared object hacking with set UID bit binaries. Seeing if our user is in any privileged groups. Check for path abuse, wildcard abuse, and cron jobs. Look for any other services that we're running that were not accessible outside of the box. Check for additional network interface cards. Look for cron jobs running writable scripts, specifically running as root or another privileged user. Looking for abusable Linux capabilities. Looking at different services and binaries that are on vulnerable versions. Checking if log rotate exploits will work. Looking for kernel exploits. If we have any Python scripts, we can look for Python library hijacking, vulnerable versions of NetFilter, hijackable tmux sessions, capturing traffic with TCP dump, looking for recent exploits and zero days from the CPTS modules, and then if we've discovered passwords previously or we have a hunch of what the root user's password may be, we can try and crack that with sucrack. Then I have an extra section specifically for Linux container privilege escalation, and that's about it for Linux privesk. Moving on to Windows privesk, uh, pretty similar to Linux privesk, the first thing we want to do is look at any automation scripts, things like WinPs, seatbelt, Power up or sharp up, JAWS, Session Gopher, Full List, Bloodhound, if we're in an AD environment. Then once again, basic enumeration, uh, once we get a foothold, gathering network information, system information, process, user and group enumeration, 
looking at our user privileges by running who am I slash priv and seeing if any of them are exploitable, checking if we're in any privileged groups that we can use to escalate our privileges, checking weak file and service permissions, things like permissive file system ACLs, weak service permissions, the unquoted service path vulnerability, permissive registry ACLs and modifiable registry auto run binary, checking save credentials with CMD key slash list, and then if we do have save credentials, running Mimikatz afterwards to extract that plain text password. Looking for services running on internal ports that weren't accessible from the outside before we gained our foothold. Looking for additional network interface cards for pivoting. Listing out all of the applications to see if any of them are vulnerable. Performing credential hunting. Performing additional pillaging for credentials or other interesting information. Checking scheduled tasks that we can modify. Looking for credentials in the process command line. Checking for the always install elevated setting being enabled. Capturing hashes with a malicious LNK file or SCF file. Looking for kernel or OS level exploits, uh, specifically on end of life systems. Attempting to bypass UAC controls if they're present. Attempting DLL injection. And then we've got some common vulnerabilities that are talked about in the CPTS, which are free game on the exam. Attempting to capture network traffic with things like Wireshark, Invey, Responder, Snaffler. Enumerating user computer description fields for clear text credentials or other useful information grabbing VHD files and mounting them to potentially dump the machine's hashes. And if custom executables are locked down, we might want to check the lolboss for alternative methods to perform what we're trying to do. And then the last methodology I'll cover is the Active Directory methodology that I've created. At the very top, I have links to my AD enumeration and AD exploitation pages. And then I've split up my methodology into the initial uncredentialed enumeration that we can perform. And then hopefully once we've gained some credentials, there is some credentialed enumeration that will give us further information. And then after we've gathered all the information that we need, uh, I've got the exploitation down at the bottom. So starting at the very top with the initial uncredentialed enumeration, we first want to identify hosts. This kind of ties back to the initial enumeration methodology. Um, we're going to want to document all discovered hosts. Start Wireshark and listen on layer 2 to discover IP addresses and host names. We can also start Responder in Analyze mode to discover IP addresses and host names. Perform fping ICMP sweeps and map scans and document all of this information. To identify users in the environment, we can attempt to abuse things like SMB null sessions, anonymous LDAP searches, looking for users with the do not require Kerberos pre-auth setting set for ASRAP roasting, using Kerbrute with common word lists to brute force usernames against a discovered domain controller. We can also do something similar with lookup SID, but it works better if we have credentials. And then if we can get control of any Windows system with system level privileges, that is essentially like getting a set of AD credentials because we can do certain attacks against a system that we have full control over. And hopefully once we have a list of usernames, we can start responder slash invey on network interfaces to listen for NTLM users and hashes, and then try to crack them offline with Hashcat or John. We can attempt a password spray against any identified users. And this works better if we gather the password policy first. Hopefully after all of that, we've gained either a system level access to a Windows machine, or we have some sort of credentials in the AD environment. With those, the first thing I like to do is run Bloodhound. It gives you a ton of information and could potentially be the easiest way to find the next route to privilege escalation. We can run an LDAP domain dump to identify all domain joined computers and then we're going to want to enumerate any accessible shares on any servers that we've found with tools like CrackMapExec, SMBMap, PowerView, or Snaffler. We can grab all users in the environment with a tool like Bloodhound and some discovered credentials and we can also grab the domain password policy if we haven't already. Specifically we're going to want to know what users are going to give us higher privileges and we can do that with tools like Wind AP Search, PowerView, Bloodhound, AD PowerShell. And then I've got links to being able to do all of these techniques from either Linux or Windows. If we're able to gain a foothold on a Windows system that's in the AD environment, we're going to want to enumerate the security controls in place on that system, looking for our Windows Defender settings, App Locker, any PowerShell constraints, or if Lapse is in use. We're going to want to look for any other logged on users on that system using CrackMap Exec and see if we can dump their credentials with Mimikatz or Rubius. We're also going to want to find any Kerberostable accounts through Bloodhound or other tools like PowerView or GetUserSPNs.py. It's also easy to check for any abusable ACL entries like force change password, add member, generic all in Bloodhound. So that's something we're going to want to check for. And then also we can check for any systems we can move laterally to using Bloodhound features like can RDP, can PS Remote, or SQL Admin. Then for pivoting in a Windows 80 environment, I've got instructions on how to use Chisel. Now once we gathered all of our options in the enumeration phase, we can now try to exploit to escalate our privileges. The first being cracking Kerberosable accounts. We could also abuse any overpersive ACL entries like force change password, add member, generic all or generic write, DS replication get changes all or DC sync. And I also have a link to doing these attacks straight from a Linux box. 
We're also going to want to check for other common vulnerabilities to escalate our privileges to move laterally. Vulnerabilities like no pack, print nightmare, and petite batam. It's also good to have a list of common misconfigurations we can use to escalate our privileges. Right now in my list, I have being in the exchange group and having those permissions, the MSRPRN printer bug, abusing MS14068, sniffing for LDAP credentials, enumerating DNS records for interesting servers, looking for user passwords and other notes in AD user descriptions, looking for the password not required field on any users, sniffing out credentials on any SMB shares, and also checking for any GPOs that we may have right access over. At the very bottom of my AD methodology, we have attacking AD trusts from both the parent domain and for cross-forest attacks. These are both covered in the AD module in the CPTS path, so I included them at the bottom here. And those are going to be the core five methodologies I think you're going to want to develop before taking the CPTS exam. Obviously, there are other methodologies that you can develop and probably should develop, some nice ones that I can think of and I'm currently working on are for database servers, having a methodology for password brute forcing because that can be a very hit or miss thing. I know the password attacks module gets a lot of crap because um, if you use the wrong word list then you could take you hours to complete or if you use the right word list it could take you minutes. So having a methodology for password brute forcing could be really helpful making sure you're using the right word list that uh, you're checking all the boxes. Another one that I haven't developed yet, but I just thought of while recording this video, or two actually, one being a pivoting methodology, because having a guideline to follow for pivoting may be extremely useful, because it's not something that you do a whole lot of just doing normal CTFs. And another thing that I personally struggle with is DNS enumeration. We're looking at exploitable DNS servers to gather other records that are available, either to find vulnerable services or other hosts that are on the network at aren't discoverable otherwise. So that's something that I may develop in the future. But uh, if you're just starting out and you haven't developed any methodologies yet, I would say these first five are the most important. All right, that's it for this video. Hopefully you have a better understanding of what methodologies are for penetration testing and why they're gonna be so important for you to develop before you take the CPTS exam. If you think there's anything I left out of my methodologies, please feel free to comment and let me know what I'm missing so you can help me out for the exam and also anyone else that's watching this video. I also have a Discord link to my channel that's gonna be in the description as well as on my page, so join that if you haven't already. And if you're liking these videos and you wanna see more, please like and subscribe to the channel so you can see when I upload, and uh, that's about it. See ya.